All right, music fans, welcome. Harmless me here yet again, talking about real music in real time for real people just like you and just like me. So Eddie Money's uh, widow is a little ticked off at uh, Rolling Stone magazine. Uh, she went over to Facebook a little while ago and here's what she said. I read an article about Eddie this morning that did little else but make light of his career and of him as a person. I always wonder what makes a total stranger decide to spend time writing about someone that they've never met in such a critical manner. I imagine that it's basically the same sort of personality that bullies people on social media whether they know them or not. Personally, I believe that Eddie was right when he'd say that he was never the darling of the music critics. That's okay, since we know how great he was as a man and as an artist, and that's all that really matters. The writer decided that he'd dwell on Eddie's late 70s, early 80s life when he was just a young man in his late 20s and early 30s, whose fame, like so many others, nearly killed him. Well, Eddie's life didn't end there. And an even greater story is how he survived that time and became a great family man while continuing to be a great artist. This is really well written. I just want to add that. I guess that's just not newsworthy for some people, especially a so called music expert. Oh, she is on fire. I love this. Even when he died, the Rolling Stone magazine uh, labeled him the patron saint of uncool. And he, she goes on to say, I look at this picture. I think of his unmistakably incredible voice. I look at his catalog of hits. I look at how he put his family first ahead of his career and himself. And I think of how he continued until the end of his life to try to be the best man that he possibly could be. And I wonder what could possibly be cooler than that. Wow. <laughs> Mrs. Money, wife of Eddie Money, the patron saint of cool. Of course, she corrects. And there is a super cool picture of Eddie Money. Uh, look, folks, uh, revisionist history. Um, it happened with Brian Howe from Bad Company. It happened with Starship. I mean, it happens with all these bands that people really like. And Eddie Money, and I've been talking about this for quite some time, has this big catalog of music. And we hear two songs, maybe three, right? Um, two Tickets to Paradise and Take Me Home Tonight. And I know, I, I guess there are a few radio stations that'll play. I want to go back. And I mean, but the guy has so many. Think I'm in love. I could put that song on repeat play for an hour. I could. It is just such an amazing song. Um, but there's music from 1980, a tune called Trinidad. I uh, let people know about that song because people don't know how great a song that is. Um, the Ready Eddie comeback album he made in the late 1990s is as good as the material he was making in the mid 1980s. I really thought that album would catch on and someone somewhere would play it, but we were almost post grunge at that point. But just going back to the late 70s, Okay, so Eddie struggled with certain substances. Um, he got himself together. Ironically, he put out an album called The Big Crash, which didn't do all that well, but wasn't a bad record. But then he started to pull himself together. And by the mid-1980s, he was on top of the world with Ronnie Spector. I mean, talk about brilliant ideas, right? But that entire album was filled with well-done, melodic music, perfect for top 40, perfect for rock stations. Eddie Money had one of the most distinctive voices in all of rock, but um, 
he'll always be labeled as kind of a so-so vocalist by the critics. Like he doesn't have this great singing voice. Uh, Eddie didn't have to have the range. He just had a distinctive voice. And there are countless artists who qualify under that label. So again, Rolling Stone <laughs> taking the, the, the uh, gratuitous route here. What's interesting is that when I reached out to one of the writers at Rolling Stone, he told me personally, he said, hey, we're really trying to change. We know we're not the magazine of the mainstream. We're not the magazine that people who actually like good music turn to. We're supposed to be about the underground, the avant-garde, you know, the, you know, like we're constantly talking about Velvet Underground, you know, they're like they're just certain artists that they constantly focus on, you know, was it MC5, who, who, by the way, pretty much suck, okay? I don't care who they influenced, they suck, all right? Done. That's my opinion, okay? Just like they have their opinion about Eddie Money. And of course, they're not going to take into account that he made a recovery from the early 80s. And his wife here, his widow, makes a great point that, okay, you're measuring a man by the beginning of his career and by maybe a few missteps along the way. And even musically speaking, um, Eddie wasn't as strong as he was after his first couple of albums. He stumbled a bit. And then even after the stumble, he had to recover some more but by the time we got to the mid 80s, you know, he was walking on water. Sorry, <laughs> had to put that out there. Not literally people. I don't want anyone to think <laughs> that, that Eddie was Jesus, okay? Just, just wanna make that clear. He had a song, it's called Walk on Water. They don't play it too much on the radio anymore. Big hit, top 10 song, yeah, what the hey, right? Um, Eddie had so much great material. Um, and yes, I am biased because Eddie Money called my radio station when I was an upstart, wet behind the ears, new program director, music director at a very big and successful Cape Cod radio station. And I've told this story before, <laughs> but the traffic director buzzes the production studio and I'm in there doing something, uh, probably trying to cut a commercial, which I was lousy at doing. And um, she buzzes in and she says, Eddie Money is on the phone for you. Now keep in mind, she doesn't know who half these people are. She might've known who Eddie Money was. And I figured, okay, sure, whatever. It's some dude pretending to be Eddie Money or maybe she got his name wrong, but I'm thinking Eddie Money. So I'm being all like, yeah, whatever, put him through, right? And so on the other end of the line is the one and only Eddie Money. And he's talking with that Bronxy Brooklyn thing that you know he spoke with. And <laughs> it was it was a great conversation. You know, we talked about, hey man, uh, I had Richie Zito work on this record and you know, he really, really thought it was going to be big and thank you for playing it. And the song that we had um, added to the playlist was a tune called The Love in Your Eyes, which went all the way to number one on the mainstream rock charts and is absent and forgotten about today. But I did my thing because I believed in Eddie Money and the song was good and it fit our format and that's it. He thanked me for playing it. We had a nice conversation. He actually mentioned his wife and kids, which is really weird, full circle kind of thing. Reading this um, post by his wife, his widow. So in any event, um, another attack on mainstream music. It, it just, it's going to continue, folks. It's like everything that we grew up with and we liked is slowly being like deconstructed. Like you're going to be convinced or they're going to try to convince you that the music you liked was cheesy. It was stupid. The people who recorded it were all a bunch of jerks and idiots. They made all these mistakes, not like the people today are making, right? Like nobody's making any mistakes today. Everybody is, 
you know, perfect and there's no substance abuse. There's no opioid abuse. There's no alcohol abuse. Everybody is just doing great, right? Right. So, you know, um, can't keep a good man down. That's a tune from Eddie Money. I think it's off his second album. And it's true. You can't. You can't keep a good man down. Eddie Money, rest in peace, was one of those one-of-a-kind artists who found fame. He sang songs uh, for the regular six-pack type guy or gal and he just um cut through most of it with his personality his perseverance and the fact that he just had a good instinct when it came to songwriting and arranging so anyway um i feel bad for his widow because she's got to read this stuff and think to herself this isn't the eddie i knew this isn't the eddie that people know so good for her for defending that and go over to Facebook and give her a high five, like a virtual one. And um, I'm here. I'm here for Eddie Money, just like I'm here for uh, Brian Howe, who passed away, and for a number of other people who are constantly being ridiculed by the rock media, this so-called rock media, who are working, you know, in lockstep with Dr. Fauci. It's just, it's just weird what the world is coming to. I mean, it's not about music anymore. Um, it's about politics. It's about revisionist history. It's about telling you what you should like. Go listen to the album Ready Eddie. I think it's uploaded to YouTube. Go check it out. Uh, it's out of print. If you can find a copy of it, uh, go grab it, go order it. It's probably like two or three bucks in some eBay thrift store. But guess what? it's something worth having because it's a great album that nobody got to hear. And it proves my point that Eddie Money had great instincts. Certainly should be a candidate for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Certainly, absolutely, 100%, he should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So that's it. That's my video. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel. And if you want to become a troll, it'll cost you a dollar a month. All right. See you soon.